Hey guys, how's it going? I'm the Duke of Italy and welcome back to another music review. And today we're covering something special, as we always do on this channel. Today we are covering a music chart. Now, if you don't know the meme, I explained this on my Mew discussion video. Gusic is a meme where it's a picture of a cat and you say Gusic and that's it. Essentially, it means that Gusic is meant to be music that, uh, I guess it's more sophisticated that cats would like or something along those lines. And it would typically seem to be around the areas of uh, jazz fusion or jazz. The definition gets twisted all the time. And it's upon its conception, it had a very niche sort of focus. Now it's completely gone. But what we have here today, I guess, is music now. So here we have this chart. As you can tell, they all have cats on the album covers. It's very great, actually. In contrast between one other music chart I found recently, which was a much larger chart, really just anything with a cat on it. I, as I might have it up right now. As you could probably see, there's a Frank Zappa album on there. There's It's just sort of a mishmash of everything and anything with a cat on the cover. So I'm gonna tell you guys straight off. The thing I like most about this chart is the amount of consistency among the album selections here is staggeringly good like you wouldn't expect there to be basically a genre of music around the idea of music but it's right here and it's fully formed like it's so bizarre that this exact genre of music is a thing basically how i would describe music in a state like this is it's shoegaze that sounds like my bloody valentine's first full length isn't anything if you guys don't know what that is basically it's like a not as good version of love as loveless although some people say it's better i would disagree it's a lot noisier in parts it's a lot more post-punk a lot of interesting breakdowns that happen not as much on loveless so it's a very interesting niche of sound here so with our top three albums there you've got albums that are almost entirely around the idea that if you took proto shoegaze it took the end of post-punk and made that into a fully fleshed out idea then you just got that as a genre uh the tokyo shoegazer record not as much but on the next row it comes back to that anyway that's enough of me beating around the bush here but basically all i'm trying to say here is that the amount of consistency among these records is really really good they're almost all shoegaze and if they're not shoegaze then they're slow core or something along those lines but they all have a good level of similarity between them now are all these albums super accessible no, I'd say about two of these I could only find on YouTube. One of them I only found on Bandcamp if I looked very closely. These are actually aren't even all albums. Two of them are singles, and one of them is an EP that's just two songs. That's the whole bottom row, but I'll get to that in a minute. So we're going to start this just like you would read a book, and we're going to start with the top here. So up first, we got The Comforts of Madness by Pale Saints. So the way I'd describe this album is... I would really compare it to Cock Two Twins mixed with Sonic Youth, which is a very weird comparison, I know, because Cock Two Twins is so spacey and dreamy, and Sonic Youth is is noisy. Like, they were really one of the most influential noise rock groups I can probably think of that isn't, like, drenched in, like, experience of, like, dread. But if you take Sonic Youth and Cock Two Twins and combine them, you'd probably get something a lot like this album. Uh, this has a lot of post-punk influences, especially in the bass work. I hear that and I kind of think Joy Division. Uh, the shoegaze elements are pretty laid back for the beginning here, but they do come more into their own throughout the rest of the album. The song Son of Sound provides a much more laid back and spacey moment of reprieve compared to the rest of the album. The song True Coming Dream is a lot more like isn't anything than pretty much anything else I can actually think of right now. It sounds a lot like the B-sides on that album, actually. A praise I had to give about this album is that every song seemed to have a very clear-cut identity. The first track is incredibly noisy, and then the shoegaze comes in sort of more after that track, and then every track seems a little bit different. Is it like Loveless where every song could instantly recognize? I would say no, but it's pretty close. In terms of sort of a proto- shoegaze post-punk sound this album is kind of ideal here it's a pretty fantastic album this next album we got is untouched by secret shine so this album has really destroyed guitar tones that are just incredibly spacey 
the female vocals of they remind me of my bleed valentine i cannot lie the extra reverb added in it just goes nuts the song temporal has a little more of a conventional structure it doesn't really take away from the song though the track so close i come it starts a little more mellow and laid back but like towards the end of the song it just becomes this sea of sound and it's, you're just drenched in it and it's a really really nicely paced song uh the song underworld is a little more of a typical shoegaze track it's definitely got some alt themes here and there the distortion is very alt rockish anyway i would give this album a recommendation too it was pretty good this next album crystallized by tokyo shoegazer is very very atmospheric that's a little bit different from the previous records where those are more post-punky this one is much more atmospheric the song 299 Addiction starts off sounding like swans for the first 30 seconds. And then after those 30 seconds, it turns into these wigged out guitars. And around this point in the album, listening to it, I realized this was not going to be ordinary shoegaze. It managed to reach a point that I could actually describe it as, while it was incredibly laid back, it still had a sense of drive and energy to it, almost paradoxically so. Continuing on 299 Addiction, I ended up describing as, quote, not just a song, but a bombardment. The amount of noise coming off this album is incredible. The next song, Bright, is a lot more dreary and sad and more meditative, but that's not taking away from any of its interesting creative elements here. There's a, a concept that was, for me at least, introduced in this song where guitar tones would sort of ring out in a really lo-fi way, but it would just continue on. And you could tell at that point, it was definitely put there on purpose. Most tracks on this album are very good, but I thought the uh, song Silent Lies was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I would not recommend this album when you're tired, though. It does not have the same effect. It's very much sort of, sort of like just passes you by. I didn't think there was that much variety on this album. It all remained kind of consistent, but all things considered, it's still a very good album. This next album actually came from last year. It's Duster's self-titled album. Now, I've seen Duster mentioned a couple times, and they're not necessarily shoegaze. I would sort of describe them as noise with some garage rock elements, but a lot of people would describe them as slowcore. And for being sort of a different type of sound to shoegaze, yet still trying to accomplish the same ideas, I would definitely agree. So these are some very slow and droney jams. So if you're not into that, you would give this album a skip for sure. The voice is droning in the background. The guitars keep droning on. It's all kind of lo-fi with that garage style. This album is very, very contemplative. There's not that much that kind of sticks out to you that makes you like really lock into your listening experience of this album. Uh, honestly, I thought it wasn't the most inspired. This album does have a couple points coming in through halfway through the album and when it introduces those those might stick out a little bit to you and then you latch onto that but the album doesn't know how quite to let go of it. duster just kind of continues with that element and they just keep throwing at you and they're like oh this one thing worked so you're gonna you're gonna like it over and over again right and i would say well not necessarily but it's, it's okay, I guess. Duster self-titled, I was I was a little mixed. I thought it was okay, though. If you like slowcore, you probably like Duster. If you like Duster's other material, you might like this album, too. I'm not saying it's bad. By no means is it bad. It's just not my favorite on this list. So this next album is Whirlpool by Chapter House. So this album goes back to the styles of the sort of proto-shoegaze we've been looking at earlier. It's still post-punky, except I would say that while the bass on this album is pretty prominent it's not as inspired and it's really just kind of backing the guitar for a lot of it which i mean isn't necessarily a terrible thing in its own right like most alt rock does that but if it's kind of post punk inspired i would want a little more bite to my bass but this album actually picks up on the second track i thought the percussion used on this track was very good it had a lot of bite to it on the song auto sleeper I was actually really, really impressed. It seemed to have a looping guitar that went over and over again. And interestingly enough, I thought the guitars had sort of a black metal tone to them. Uh, of course, black guitars and black metal could have all sorts of different tones, but just the sort of very abrasive and aggressive type of tone used for it. And I felt like if you just added some reverb, you would get these guitars here. There's a noise breakdown towards the end of that track that I liked a lot. Reaching the end of this track, it's very interesting. You see almost like a p history piece of uh, the English rock scene where you see the transitions from post-punk slowly into sort of more of a uh, Britpop style, which I thought was super interesting. Falling Down felt very 90s, almost kind of Blur-like. If You Want Me felt straight like it was out of Definitely Maybe by Oasis, just with 
more shoegazy elements. It was, it was a very interesting listen. So while not a completely spotless and perfect album, I thought it was a very good listen. And it honestly, it felt good to hear something that was very aware of how the music scene was transitioning. Whether or not that was intentional, I do not know. But I'm just, for the, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. Next, we reach Lemon's Chair with their album, I Hate, I Hope. Now, I looked into this group a little bit. They're from Japan, just like Tokyo Shoegazer. So, of course, they are impossible to find anywhere except YouTube, and I mean that. You can look these guys up on Discogs, and them and Tokyo Shoegazer, their albums are actually worth, like, over $140 on CD. I don't even know if that includes shipping. It's kind of ridiculous how much Japanese albums go for on CD. Like, is this Vaporwave cassettes or something like that? Like, this is ridiculous. I'm trying to, I'm trying to buy a CD here and listen to it. But no, I have to listen to the YouTube version and get a lesser quality version. Uh, by the way, not to sound pretentious or anything, but there are some serious times where getting a CD version, the mixing is much, much better than what you hear on Spotify. For example, I have a copy of Loveless on CD and hearing it in my car, I was probably in danger of crashing because of how gorgeous it was sounding. And you already know how gorgeous it sounds just on Spotify. So just saying, getting it on vinyl or CD, a physical copy really can really elevate your experience. Anywho, more about Lemon's Chair. So the difference between Lemon's Chair and Tokyo Shoegazer, which I didn't realize till about halfway through the first track, is that Lemon's Chair doesn't use a lot of vocals. In fact, it's mainly ambient, kind of drone feeling, which I found actually interesting because both these groups, uh, talking about Tokyo Shoegazer and Lemon's Chair here, they actually had a split at one point, which I didn't really understand. While Tokyo Shoegazer does have their ambient bits here and there, they have a lot of vocals. So after the Proto Shoegaze sounds, I was actually quite delighted to find that this album was a much more modern take on Shoegaze. Still noisy though, still got that bite that I was looking for. Now I gotta say, this album did feel a little one-dimensional. It was very much trying to be kind of post-rocky, and even though it was trying to be post-rocky, it never really had the benefits that vocals on something like Spiderland would have. Of course, people are probably going to be like, oh, but Duke, Godspeed You Black Emperor is post-rock, and they don't have any vocals except for the speeches. And I'm like, well, they do have speeches. And this has no vocals. And when you have a droney effect for so long, it's a little hard to convey more than just a couple emotions. For example, if you play, uh, if you play Passage Diver, uh, sorry if I pronounced that name wrong, if you play one of their Dungeon Synth albums, I'm not expecting, like, a wide range of emotions that I might find on Weezer's Blue album where you're like, oh, there's some confidence, there's some loneliness, there's some more dreary stuff. On a Dungeon Synth record, I'm expecting 24-7 dread or just isolation and mystery, something like that, which is kind of similar on this album right here. I know it's not Dungeon Synth, it was just an analogy. So on to the things I liked about this album, and I gotta say, there were quite a few things I did like. First of all, every single instrument felt like the tones were just murdered. Everything on this was changed, and for the better, even the drums sounded super reverbial, and just just totally different. It was almost alien how this album sounded. Uh, the track Swallowtail was slow and it was meditative, which sounds like a unique point, but then everything does kind of try and follow suit. Uh, the track, uh, I think it was called Virtus. I don't know how to pronounce it. This is a Japanese group after all, so English might not be how they're trying to translate directly here. But there were some lighter vocals here and there, but it was really just ooze. The track Celsius uh, reincorporates the drones in a much more heavy sense. And uh, by this point in the album, I kind of caught on to the trends that were happening. Uh, the track Halcyon B, I actually found probably to be the most interesting. The guitars seemed by far the most aggressive, and yet they were so covered in all these effects that the effect was totally gone, which was really interesting, where I expected, like, if I hear those guitars normally, I'd totally be, like, banging my head or something like that, but it's it's actually quite the opposite, where it's it's so much in the back that it's kind of a more of a meditative effect. The rest of the album kind of follows suit. It's all kind of the same idea until the last track here. The track Derosine is a little more uncomfortable in, in a good way, for sure. It definitely had its interesting ideas of taking the comfort out of shoegaze, where normally you'd have the spacey feel. It was more like, like heavy sleet, just pounding, where it, all, it had these discordant harmonies here and there that just felt just kind of off, even though you'd hear them over and over again. Uh, it had a lot of tension to it, which I, I liked. Anyway, so about this album, I thought it was good. 
Uh, was it my favorite on this list? No. Uh, getting me to like an ambient album is a little tough because it a lot of the times it doesn't have the same emotional, I guess, range that a normal album I'd listen to does. But that doesn't mean you should skip this album. It's definitely a good one. All right, next we reach the Split EP. Asobi Sexu and Boris, both groups from Japan. Now, you don't got to go on YouTube to find this thing. It's actually on Spotify, and it's only a two-track EP. And when researching this, I found it very interesting because Boris was labeled as doom metal in some cases, which I didn't really understand that much. And Asobi Sexu was more like J-Rock, so it was a very interesting combination here, and I was kind of excited to hear it. And I gotta say, I was not disappointed, even a little bit. Now, while I found this album not that shoegazy, it did have a very space rock feel. It was very dreamy, but not too noisy. The first track actually turns chaotic towards the end, but it still retains its more spacey elements. The second track, New Year's, I was kind of thinking that it was going to try and do some kraut rock ideas, which, whether or not I could determine that, I was out of my comfort zone. I don't know that much about kraut rock to be able to devise what's here, but I actually thought that as if you combine shoegaze or space rock with pop punk, I thought this was very blink sounding. And then it transitioned into this almost doom gaze idea. Anyway, describing this album was pretty tough, but I honestly said if it was um probably like four times as long, maybe just add some more tracks on, uh, I think the split had a whole lot going for it, and um, it was very good. Next, we got uh, West Coast Touch. Now, this is a European shoegaze band, and I gotta say, I was very impressed by this one. Touch is just a single release. It's not any more than just one song, but it's good. I thought the song was noisy, but it didn't quite reach abrasion. Uh, the opening with the rhythm guitar just way in the back, which stacked another rhythm guitar on top of it and the drums and the bass was a really good idea and it worked really well. It had really nice indie sort of Euro style vocals, which were great. Uh, between the verses and the choruses, the level of distortion among the guitars I noticed shifted uh, probably just from pressing a pedal. Uh, the only downside to this was that it was pretty clear if you paid attention to when they shifted and it wasn't like a gradual add-on. It was very clear cut, but I still thought it was strong. Anyway, Touch was a good single. I totally recommend it. All right, next is this group AvraQ with their single, The New Imperative. And these guys are from Gainesville, Florida. So uh, my friends from Gainesville, shout out to you guys. This track is for you. Now, while on Touch... I thought that the snare rolls had a ton of impact and were really good and aggressive. I think on here, they're still pretty good, but they don't have the exact kind of tone I was looking for, but still pretty good. So this song had a much more of a punk feel, just from the simplicity of the chords, but I did think it was nice. It had a lot of energy, it felt happy, and the vocals rang out in a way that was very appealing. Anyway, it's a good song. You can find these guys on Bandcamp. Uh, you cannot find them anywhere else. Seriously, I looked everywhere. Anyway, so what do I think of this chart as a whole? Well, I gotta say, this is quite possibly my favorite chart that I've ever seen. Of course, I haven't delved too deep into most charts that I've seen, but this one is just really great. The fact that they were able to capture such a unique yet pretty diverse sound within albums that have cats on the cover, I thought was amazing. I don't know how anyone else in the world could find this, especially when you have to dive deep on Bandcamp and YouTube to find Japanese shoegaze groups, and you just dig them out and you throw them in. Uh, the only sort of things that I don't like as much on this is that obviously I thought Duster's LP wasn't the strongest, and the fact that you had three single releases at the bottom here, one of them I guess being an EP, but it's really just two songs, I thought that it wasn't exactly the best inclusion. Maybe, I mean, I'm not saying that, oh, you have to go out and find a whole other cat-faced LP to put here, which would be ridiculous. I mean, you did your job with just these cats. They're beautiful cats. Look at them. But I've, of course, I'm digressing a bit. Uh, this is the best chart I've ever seen. And I know it's early to say that, but come on. It's albums with cats on the cover, and it's not like the big the big chart which while the big chart is good it's this has got a level of consistency that's just beyond anything uh even on a shoegaze chart that i'm probably going to cover at some point it goes into with my bloody valentine as one of the three starting points is actually pretty
popular chart here. If you go on Mew, you'll probably find it within like a few threads. It goes, it says, if you want to go the more noisy direction, you can check out something like LSD in the search for God. And LSD in the search for God is not nearly as noisy as My Bloody Valentine. And yet, half the albums on here are just as noisy as My Bloody Valentine, if not more at points. Maybe not as unified, maybe a little more abrasive, but it does reach that level of noise, just like isn't anything. Anyway, fantastic chart. Whoever made this, props to you. You are a hero, and uh, you have all my respect. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a good day.